Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another one of my course vlogs. Now today we are out here at the beautiful Cross Creek Golf Club out here in Temecula, California. There's no cell reception out here. There's barely any homes out here. There's just golf and wine and beautiful, beautiful rolling hills. Hey, if you're new to the channel, please click the subscribe button down below. I'd love to have you back here week after week for some more golf. And if you like the video, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up and we'll see you out here on the first hole. Lots of holes right over the creek. I mean, hey, it's Cross Creek. Here we go. Now starting down in the lowest section of this property is the first couple holes here. Playing through this forested area, it's gonna require some precision off the tee and into the green. Here on the first hole, it's just over 400 yards, playing slightly uphill, and make sure you take a driver off the tee. There's plenty of room to deal with, even down the left-hand side, and that actually should be your miss, as it'll open up this green, giving you a shot through this narrow chute, allowing the ball to chase all the way up to the green. Avoid that bunker down the right, and really anything down the right is treacherous on this entire hole. Now luckily the fairway is a little wider out there and this drive did find the short grass just short of the penalty area on the right side. Now I'm trying to chip it around these trees giving myself an angle for the next shot. There was no way I was going to go for the green on that one. Didn't quite get it into the fairway here so a little chunky lie out of the rough but just a three-quarter sand wedge here for me. Actually, that's a three-quarter lob wedge, I'm mistaken. Hitting this pin high to about 15 feet. And these greens are very slippery out here at Cross Creek and generally running very true. You have to be below the hole generally to make any putts unless you perfectly get it right in the center and just get those par putts to roll in from 20 feet. Number two here is nearly a carbon copy off the tee from number one, but a lot different into the green. A narrow shoot of trees once again and another 200 yard carry into the fairway. Make sure you're choosing your tees properly on this golf course to allow yourself to have some fun. These first two holes can really penalize you off the tee if you don't choose properly. These big, deep, pot style bunkers on this hole as the par four climbs all the way to the green, and the green is gonna sit blind from the fairway, sitting perched up on the hill. Now this morning, you see we have layers on, and there is a breeze. You can't see it back here in the trees, but it is directly in our face. About a club and a half breeze, and it's about 45 degrees. This is not ideal California weather, but it was gonna get up to the mid 70s by the back nine. So just layer up and deal with the cold for a little bit and hopefully we can have some tolerable golf here coming home. You can see there the flag is moving. There's plenty of wind up there playing right in our face on this par four and this par putt is not ideal for me. 25 feet up and over a ridge heading back down the hill beyond the hole. And now we got 10 feet for bogey, and it's just not going to happen. An ugly double bogey right off the start. We're two over par through two, but that's all right. We're going to have a nice shot at it here on the third hole. Spinning around 180 degrees, this par three is going to play downwind for us. It is flat off the tee, no elevation change. Choose your club properly as there's a spine running through this green vertically. So if the left and right sides of the green are separated by this vertical spine. Naturally, I hit it on the wrong side. Give myself another 30 to 40 foot look here for birdie. But luckily, after setting up the camera behind the hole, I got a good look at it. A beautiful bounce back birdie there after the double bogey. There's nothing better than to see a very long putt go in the hole. Now this 331 yard par four, it's a short one from the tips and theoretically could be drivable for me. 
but today it's straight into the wind and playing with this severe dogleg way around the corner, you can't see a thing from the tee except for the fairway. So just gonna have to play it safe here and lay it down into the fairway and wedge it into the green. It, the green does look simple there, but there's a big shelf on the left-hand side that you need to avoid. Now a simple four iron off the tee will do it for me, and it actually was too much, sending it right through the fairway and up onto this awkward side hill lie on this mound, creating a hook lie for me. I was just trying to prevent it going down that shelf, but it was no can do. Sitting about eight feet below the green down here, it's a big flop shot for me up onto the surface and down to about 15 feet. You can really hear the wind starting to crank up here. Man, I did not anticipate this kind of conditions on this morning, but it's just golf. You just got to hit it, chase it, and hit it again. Now, the first par five on the card is going to be right back into the teeth of the wind once again. Trouble down the left this time, as that creek is way down the left-hand side and will gobble up anything. And believe it or not, if you're right of the cart path, that's trouble for you as well. Now, when holes play into the wind, we know that that effectively narrows the fairway, requiring a very precise shot. So as this par five approaches the green, you're gonna see just how difficult it's going to be as every single shot is playing right into the teeth of that wind. Your layup is gonna have to be perfect laid back of the creek or over the creek. Either way, you're going to have a tough shot into this green. And don't be deceived by that pot bunker short of the green. From everywhere except on the green, you're going to realize that that bunker looks right next to the green. It's a beautiful false front. I love that kind of design. Now, all that talk of the trouble left and right, and sure enough, I finally lost a drive to the right. Down into the creek there, I had to take a drop in some terrible rough. Just barely got a four iron on this, trying to clear the next creek up towards the green, and I was down in it once again. Luckily, I found this ball, was able to hack it out up towards the fringe and have some look at a par here. And it wasn't a very good look, so just a bogey, and we'll head on down to the sixth hole. This par four is very difficult generally. Regardless of the wind situation, it's straight up the hill. 420 yards is all the distance you need with this much terrain, as most tee shots are going to be funneling down towards where that cart is on the right-hand side. If you're in the second half of the fairway here, it's a severe slope from right to left, so make sure your ball lands on the right-hand side of that central bunker. Coming up into the green, that pot bunker short will look nearly greenside, as this is a big blind approach into this perched green. After an hour of playing straight into the wind, it was a gracious reprieve to finally have a little bit behind you. Sending the big driver down the fairway, it kicked down the left-hand side and into the rough for me. It was sitting up in the rough, so a flyer lie uphill and downwind. I played for the front of the green knowing there was no way I was going to spin it properly and judged it just on perfect. Pin high. 10 feet, and I couldn't convert. And look at how much that putt rolls on out. That's going to show you how good these greens are out here at Cross Creek. Don't pass this course up. Cell phone reception or not, it's nice to get away and play some good pure golf. Now here on the seventh hole, another one that's going to play straight downwind for us, and it's also straight down the hill. A shorter par five, sitting only 535 yards from the tips. This cross bunker that we're coming up onto is going to be my main hazard off the tee as the hill and slope will take everything down towards it. And we need to make sure that we stay out of that sand. If that is the case, we will have a look at the green 
and be able to avoid all of these layup bunkers, which is going to push your approach over to the right hand side, forcing you to have another blind wedge over that front right bunker. It's a very deceiving hole here with the architecture and the little humps and bumps all over the place. Now trying to get another big smooth draw up there in the wind and it was mission accomplished. This ball took a kick all the way down the hill and just barely landed short of this bunker. Now that's a 190 yard nine iron that is generally a seven iron for me, but there was that much wind up there. This wind was howling today. A good two club breeze, allowing myself to have a nice eagle look, but some wind probably had some effect on that putt. But ultimately, it's a knocked over, nice tap in birdie as we go back down to two over par. That's not too bad here on this front nine. Now, number eight, this is a very difficult par three. That big reed area on the right is effectively a lake, forcing you to precisely hit a very long club into this green. Luckily, the front of the green does bounce up generously, allowing you to hit a longer club. I'll be a golf shot. Perhaps the purest shot I hit all day just went straight over the green. I was able to find it, chip it, and get it up here to about 30 feet. Not ideal for the par look again, but we're just gonna cozy it on down there, avoid the double bogey, take our bogey and run. Down to the ninth hole, the most difficult hole on the entire front nine. Luckily for us, it's playing downwind, but it's still one hard golf hole. Now the dead ghost tree on the left hand side of the fairway is going to be your target off the tee. Everything else is effectively blind off the tee. Send everything you got all the way down there as long as you don't go beyond that cart path. Everything will start to feed straight towards that lake and that's nowhere you want to be. Air off to the right hand side on your approaches as that front of the green will kick to the left and into the water. Now straight down breeze, I knew I could not hit this more than about 300 off the tee. This ball rolled straight through the fairway, hanging up here on this side hill lie up in the rough, but it did allow me to get a good smooth sand wedge on this sending it pin high, spinning right off the front of the green. These greens are so good out here. And from the front of the green, you might as well just take your putter. It's a very tight lie all around most of these greens throughout the entire course. Hey, that's just another comfy tap in par. We'll see you next week for the back nine. Later.